Hi, I'm Daniel, a solutions engineer on the Team City team here at JetBrains, and I'm pleased to announce the availability of a new Terraform provider for Team City. And this enables you to manage all aspects of the server configuration through code. So let's take a quick look at why we created the provider and the benefits it can offer. So in a typical organization, we may have developers and build engineers and also DevOps engineers. And developers and build engineers may be more focused on managing the individual projects, such as the individual project settings, uh, creating the build pipelines, configuring the build steps. Whereas DevOps engineers may focus more on the management of the server, such as the authentication methods that are being used, permissions, global server settings, and also provisioning of new projects as and when new teams require them. So up until now, we've enabled developers and build engineers to configure their individual projects using configuration as code with Kotlin DSL. But until now, we didn't have anything similar for DevOps engineers to manage the server through code. And this is one of the reasons why we now have the Terraform provider for TeamCity to help with this specific area. And in terms of benefits offered by the provider, you can configure the whole server, as I mentioned, uh, but you can do this through declarative code. So you can configure global server settings, such as the maximum artifact size, the artifact storage location, authentication options, so the modules that are being used, which single sign-on methods you're enabling users to uh, log into Team City with, managing users, groups, and roles, and provisioning new projects, but you can also version control the configuration settings, meaning you have that full audit of the changes being made to Team City and enable you to roll back to a previous version of the configuration if required. You can also use this provider with other Terraform providers. For example, if you want to use AWS to help provision your Team City infrastructure prior to configuring Team City itself or maybe using the GitHub provider for linking to repositories within your organization and creating those as projects in TeamCity. Plus, many other providers are available. So you can also use the Terraform plan command to see the exact changes prior to execution. And this is something that would be difficult to accomplish if you were to use something like the TeamCity REST API directly. So the provider helps figure out what needs to be changed and calls the appropriate Team City REST endpoints for you. And finally, it enables the rollback of changes if you ever need to revert to a previous state of the server configuration. So in terms of getting started, the Team City Terraform provider is listed on the Terraform registry. Uh, you can get this today. And if I switch over to my IDE, you can see I've got a sample project here with a few Terraform files. And I'll go through and describe what each of these files is doing. So first of all, I've got a variables file that defines my Terraform providers for this particular project. So you can see I'm making use of two providers, one for GitHub, so that I can integrate Team City with my GitHub organization for doing things like uh, single sign-on with GitHub, and also bringing in some repositories from my organization and adding them as projects in TeamCity. I then have a selection of variables here, and these are being populated from environment variables locally on my machine. So rather than hard coding the secret values like tokens and uh, secrets directly in the files, these are populated through environment variables, but I'm, I've defined the variables here so that I can use them within my Terraform project. So the first file we'll look at is the authentication file, and this defines some authentication settings, such as the authentication modules that will be used, as well as adding a connection to the root project for my for GitHub app. So if I go over to Team City, and we look at the administration screen and go down to the authentication section. 
We can see here that only token-based authentication and built-in authentication using username and password, uh, those are the only two modules I currently have enabled. So if I go to my login screen for my Team City server, this is what I see today. There's no single sign-on option. I only get the option to log in with a username and password. So what this script is doing here is I'm telling it to use three modules, the built-in token authentication, which is required, and then built-in authentication, but also given the option to use a GitHub uh, single sign-on and restricting it to uh, users from the JetBrains organization. And then if we scroll down a bit further, you can see I've defined a GitHub app connection that will be added to the root project. I've given it a display name, uh, pointing it to my organization and defined the app ID secret uh, and other settings. One of the other files that I'll show here is the global settings file, and this stores settings that you would see from the global settings screen in Team City. And I've set here the maximum artifact size of five gigabytes, also the maximum number of artifacts that can be uploaded as part of a build, and also set in the default execution timeout to 120 minutes, and the default VCS interval or the polling interval to 120 seconds. I've also got a permissions file here and this defines a new role. So I want to provide some of my users the ability to administer various aspects of build agents on my Team City server. So I've defined a custom role here that inherits from project developer and I've called this the agent maintainer role and I've given it specific permissions such as administering agents as well as agents for projects and also authorizing and the ability to connect to agents. I've then created or defined the definition of a custom group, so agent maintainers and assigned the roles and also the project scope, so assigning it to all projects on the server. I then have the option to add additional users, so I've defined a user with the username Paul. And then I've assigned the user to the new group and that will automatically inherit the role that I've defined up here. And then finally, I have a projects script here. And the idea of this is to automatically create projects in Team City based on the repositories that exist within my GitHub organization. So if I go to my organization here, you can see I've got a number of repositories, so project A, project B, project C, and then I've got a project template, and this contains some Kotlin DSL code that additional projects can uh, use if I uh, decide to create a new repository. So each of these projects has its own uh, has its own Team City Kotlin DSL configuration. So if I go to settings.kts, you can see uh, the the definition here for a build and a deploy. So back in the IDE, let's have a look at what this is doing. So first of all, I am using the GitHub Terraform provider to query projects that exist within my GitHub organization that aren't template, and that will match the three projects, so project A, project B, and project C. And that's output here. And then I've got a project module that defines the, uh, the structure of a Team City project. So we've got the Team City project itself. We're then creating a VCS route with that repository uh, with that repository defined. I'm then enabling version settings. So when Team City creates this project, I'm automatically importing the settings from the uh, repo. So for each of those projects, I'm uh, creating that project in Team City. So let's show you what happens when I run this. So I'll bring up the terminal and we'll do terraform apply. 
and it's going to connect to GitHub using the GitHub Terraform provider to retrieve a list of the repositories. It's also using the Team City provider to figure out all of the changes that need to be made. And it's summarized here what's going to be added. So you can see all of the projects that will be added. And if I scroll up further, you can see uh, all of the, the users, the groups, the roles that will be created. So if I type in yes to proceed, so we can see that 16 items have been added on Team City. So if I now go over to my Team City UI, we can see there are now three projects that have been created. And because these have imported all of the settings from uh, each of the respective repositories, you can see that I've got a build and deploy configuration for each of these uh, projects. And then if I go to the administration screen, I'll show you some of the settings that we tweaked here. So first of all, on the global settings, you may recall I've defined a, uh, an artifact file size limit of five gigabytes, and also a number or maximum number of artifacts per build, which is 10, as well as the default execution timeout, and also the VCS polling interval. And then if we look at the authentication screen, we can see there is now an additional module enabled. So we've got GitHub app uh, authentication enabled. And if I go to the root project, I can show you the connection that was created from my Terraform script. So under the connections, you can see now we have a GitHub app connection that's linking to my GitHub org. And then finally, if I just go to the login screen again and refresh, so you can see as well as the built-in authentication, we also have the option to log in using GitHub. So if I click on this, I now have single sign-on support using my GitHub account. And if the user doesn't exist within Team City, that user will be created automatically. And because over in my Terraform script, I've restricted this to users from the JetBrains organization. This won't just let any user log in to the server. So one of the final things I want to show is on the administration screen, if I go to the uh, users screen, we can see the new user pool has been created. And if I go to the group screen, we should see the, the new group I defined, which is the agent maintainers. And then on the role screen, we can also see the custom agent maintainer role and the explicit permissions I've defined for that role. So that's a short walkthrough of the new Terraform provider for TeamCity, illustrating how it can be used for configuring various aspects of a TeamCity server. In the examples I've just shown, I was executing the Terraform scripts from my local machine, but you could even take this a step further. So once your TeamCity server is initially provisioned, you could have this Terraform repository. So all of, the, all of those configuration files could be added as a project in TeamCity. So any new commits would automatically trigger those scripts to be executed by TeamCity directly. So they wouldn't have to be executed from an individual uh, DevOps engineer's machine. So feel free to give the provider a try. Uh, please let us know in the comments if you have any feedback or questions. Thank you for watching.